everyone and greetings from Stockholm. I am so excited to be here. I am here just for one night only, um, like a day and a half with my really good friend Jake and we are going to see as much as we possibly can in a very short period of time. It's actually probably after 1 p.m. at this point because um, I got in at a little after 10 a.m. but Jake's flight got delayed so by the time we finally got into Stockholm um, it's now much later so I'm at my hotel the central hotel I thought I'd give you a really quick tour of my room before I go meet up with Jake and let the sightseeing begin so give you a let me just flip this down so this is the entrance to my room. So it's not a huge room, but um, it's pretty well appointed. I have a nice little uh, kind of closet here. There unfortunately is not a safe in the room, which is kind of a bummer, but you have like two nice little hooks here for coats, because you definitely need them in the winter in Stockholm. And then this is the little room. Look how cute it is. So this is a room with kind of two twin beds put together, which is quite standard in Europe. And over here, you see there's two nice little kind of chairs and a table there in the corner. Um, I opted to put my suitcase on that versus the closet on the way in just because it felt a bit easier access for me since I'm staying by myself. And then there's just a nice little desk area with some plugs. So pretty basic, all you really need. Um, but I will give them a shout out because there's some really lovely little teas, instant coffee, and two free bottles of water. So I will definitely be making good use of that. And then there's one other thing I wanna show you which is kind of hilarious. So um, I thought I'd be lifting lots of pastries and delicious food here, not barbells. And then I'll just pop into the bathroom which is already a little bit of a mess, so forgive me. I've already kind of uh, exploded in here. Um, so this is the bathroom. Really kind of cute, tiny, um, very kind of well appointed again and um, a really kind of <laughs> clever way to kind of fit the shower into the room and the bathroom. And for those of you that are quite tall, you'll notice, look how high up that shower uh, kind of fixture is. Um, we're definitely in the land of tall people here, so you won't have any issues. That is kind of my really quick tour here. I gotta go run and meet Jake now, but um, we will show you more of Stockholm, so hope you enjoy it. Look, guys, we found Dunkin' Donuts in Stockholm. And yes, we're gonna be those tourists that go in and get coffee there. At the time of recording this video, Duncan is in 36 countries around the world, including Sweden. In the interest of full disclosure, I used to work at Duncan in public relations and social media. I absolutely loved my time working at Duncan, and now when I travel to other countries, I have to make a visit into the Dunkin Donuts there to experience what the menu items are like. For my visit to Dunkin in Stockholm, I opted for a vanilla latte and a heart-shaped cream-filled donut that looks like the Swedish flag and it was absolutely delicious as was the latte. What are your thoughts of Stockholm so far? It kind of looks like Harvard and Ottawa combined right now. <laughs> Harvard and Ottawa combined. Harvard, Ottawa. Let's see if this bridge. uh bridge the building. The building looks like the Canadian Parliament. Alright. Looks like Harvard. I guess we'll see if Jake's uh, thoughts evolve as we go on.
Jake. We're going to the castle, the palace? Yeah, we're going to stalk Princess Madeline because well, she married the wrong New Yorker. <laughs> I think somebody's himself. trying to put himself in the running. <laughs> married the wrong New York finance bro. You're not a finance bro though. I know, but I'm still a New Yorker. So. But you could be, yeah. Jake apparently is really into royals in general. And I didn't know this about him. We've been friends for like 10 years, so yeah. So we're gonna see how this palace in Stockholm stacks up to all the other ones. What's you, the best one you've been to so far for palaces? I mean, it's Buckingham Palace, of course. Obviously. I like that one too. Have you gone in the summer? Because you can go inside in the summer. Yes. Yeah, I have too. It's pretty amazing. All right. Largely to find Kate. <laughs> Did it work out? <laughs> No, but I know she likes to walk her dog around there. She does in the garden, in the Kensington Palace. You know where her dog's name is? What? Lupo. Isn't that the same as like the Obama's dog or L -U -P -O. something? L U P O. Okay. All right, we're gonna go see if we can find the entrance because we've just walked up a big hill and now we're walking down a big hill and yeah. Treasury, right? Yeah. What do we think of it? It was awesome. Yeah. I'm not really doing a good job getting you in the camera. Um, I, walk, I walk faster than you do. Well, we're also on like some really hazardous uh, cobblestones right now. Um, yeah, it was really cool. I think we, um, lots of bling, lots of swords, no photography allowed. Some crowns. Yeah. Jake wants a crown and a sword oh, with lots of bling. Sword. All right, on to the next. <laughs> If you're planning a visit to Stockholm, I highly recommend a visit to the Royal Palace. With 600 rooms, it is one of the largest royal palaces in Europe. It's also the official residence of His Majesty the King of Sweden. We went on our trip before COVID-19 when the palace was still open to the public. I'm sure it will be open again as times improve, so keep an eye on their website, which I'll have linked in the description box below. The palace has been in the same location since the middle of the 13th century when the Kroner Castle was built. Trey Kroner Castle, which was destroyed in a fire on the 7th of May, 1697. Due to the costly Great Northern War, the palace was not ready to use again until 1754 when King Adolf Frederick and Queen Louisa Ulrica moved in. I absolutely loved visiting the palace. I found the interiors to be incredibly beautiful and well preserved for guests to enjoy. As we were there around Christmas time, it was also wonderful to see the palace decorated for Christmas. Definitely plan to spend a few hours at the palace. There's a lot to see from the actual palace itself to a number of museums that are also on site at the palace. I've seen varying reports of between three to five museums being open at any given time. For those that are interested in ghosts and ghost hunting, here's a fun fact for you. I would also encourage that you read up on the palace history of ghosts. In my research, there were a few ghosts that are known by name and a specific kind of visual likeness that are apparently found in the palace. It's a bit eerie, but also a bit fascinating.
ice cream or silly sticks. tour we stepped outside and realized that it was dark out in the winter in Stockholm it gets dark out early so just be prepared for this however what was special to see is that the city lights up the buildings and has a lot of Christmas lights making the city feel so much more festive at night after our palace tour and wandering around to check out the city center buildings all lit up we made our way to a Christmas market for a warm drink and to do a little Christmas shopping. There are so many wonderful parts of Europe around Christmas that have Christmas markets and Stockholm is one of them. Just please keep in mind that as you watch this footage, we went to Stockholm years before COVID-19 was even a blip on our radar. So I understand seeing these images of non-socially distanced people may be triggering to some. At the market, there were lots of wonderful homemade gifts, hot mulled wine, wreaths, and many more wonderful items to check out. If you visit during Christmas time, I would highly recommend doing some research and finding out where the Christmas markets in Stockholm are. I had a hard time remembering the exact location of the one that we were visiting, but I know that it's adjacent to the narrowest street in Stockholm. And this is actually a really cool thing to see if you're in Stockholm. It is the narrowest street in the city. It is named after Martin and I, what I can tell you is the Christmas market that we visited was at the top of these steps. So you'd essentially walk down them to get into other parts of Stockholm. Now let's talk a little bit about this narrowest street of Stockholm. The street has a width of 36 steps and it tapers down to a mere 90 centimeters or 35 inches, making it the narrowest street in Stockholm. Um, it's also described as an alley as well. There are stairs uh, running up and down it. The alley is named after the merchant and burger Martin Trotzig. He, um, was born in Wittenberg actually, immigrated to Stockholm in 1581 and ended up buying properties in this alley in 1597 and 1599, um, apparently also dealing in iron and copper. What's interesting about Martin is he eventually became one of the richest merchants in Stockholm. After wandering through the alley, we made our way to a very special dinner. The friend that I was traveling with had a friend that he went to university with in Stockholm and she kindly suggested that we go and experience a traditional Swedish Christmas feast. We were there in December and she said that she knew just the restaurant to take us to. So we said, absolutely, we are completely up for that. The restaurant that we went to is called Restaurant Hjurta. I'm also going to put it on the screen for you. And the restaurant is located on the island of, oh gosh, here we go again, Skeps, Skepsholmen. I'm so sorry for butchering the Swedish pronunciation. It's one of the island, the city island's smallest islands. And it was really fun to walk over. We walked over a series of little bridges, all in the dark, but really nicely illuminated with lights to get over to the restaurant. And I felt like we were on an adventure. And when we arrived to the restaurant, it was so warm and cozy inside. Uh, we were greeted with a hot glass of mulled wine. They either had alcoholic or non-alcoholic versions. And then the restaurant runs as a buffet for their Swedish Christmas feasts. And we started with a fish course, followed by a meat course, and then we also had dessert. But 
It was the perfect way to end a long day of walking and sightseeing around in Stockholm and a very special experience. I will leave the restaurant linked down below if you want to check it out. So with that said, that wraps up my first day in Stockholm. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you do, please hit that like button. If you've seen amazing things to see and do or places to stay in Stockholm, please leave it in a comment down below. Sharing is caring here on this channel. and. If you want to see more videos like this, I have a day two travel vlog coming up of Stockholm where we go to the Vasa Museum and we do in the ABBA Museum and we do lots of other cool stuff. So make sure you hit that subscribe button to see that next. So thanks again for tuning in guys and I will see you soon.